Who are the best prospects for the 2024 NFL Draft? We're examining the premier talent today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Joe, putting the draft caps on. We did the NFL team building executive hats yesterday. Today is NFL draft focus lens. And I would like to formally welcome you to the party. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I called us the draft dudes for many years. And uh, I've not been much of a draft dude, but now I'm back into being a draft dude. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, we can thank Bleacher Report for yes, facilitating your your nudge back into the space, right? Yeah, or yeah. at least the the nudge for this year to have that process start for you. So thank you, Bleacher Report, for getting Joe back into draft prospects. Yeah, about two weeks ago, I get an email. We'd like you to do a stream on December eighth to reveal your top ten NFL draft prospects, and I'm like, okay, yes, I will do this. And so I, I cranked it up. I've been watching the top prospects. I have a top 10. Kyle has a top 10. And so it's finally time to really get into the top of this class. And so should be some good conversations. A lot of takes that I don't think people have heard from us yet. And I'm, this is my thought about myself for the draft process this year. I'm coming in like a wrecking ball, Kyle. I don't know that. I don't know the narratives. I haven't been like dialed in on the week to week, um, you know, roller coaster that comes with scouting prospects. But for the prospects I've evaled, I've went back and I've watched their seasons, and I can talk about them. So uh, excited to crash the draft party here uh, now that I'm a, I'm at the party, right? You got to be at the party to crash it. So here I am. Right. So let's, I guess, talk about what the 10s look like. If you have a top 10, I have a top 10. Uh, we can compare and contrast, talk about players that may be missed, uh, talk about those players and the the themes of the position groups and all that good stuff. So your top rated prospect for the 2024 NFL draft is easy, easy, easy. Marvin Harrison Jr. Wide receiver, Ohio State. What uh, scoring scale are you currently working on? Uh, it's out the of one, one, the it's out of a hundred. Okay, so it's like the one that we were using at our previous employer. Yeah, I've I've tweaked it a little bit, um, so but the spirit so of it, really yeah, the spirit of it's the, great. it's the same deal, like the same number thresholds. I just I dropped one of the traits, so I have nine traits that I eval, and the tenth trait is RAS, so it's just a clean RAS score for ten percent of your grade. So I don't have the and, RAS scores; I have all film scores. Okay. So if I asked you what this player's grade was right now, would you be able to tell me or no? Because you don't have an RAS score. His film score is an 88, and that's out of a possible out of 90. 90. Yeah. Okay. So, so pretty he's going to be a top 10 evaluation. <laughs> yeah. If he has a perfect RAS score, Kyle, which is totally possible, right? Yeah. He's going to score as a 98. Yeah. Unbelievable. I haven't wanted. I, I do not grade for RAS, so I have a score out of 100 already. Uh, he is a 94 for me. He is my top prospect as well. The next highest player is a 91.5. So he's got like a three and a half point cushion over the next best prospect. Like it, it's pretty significant separation. And I would imagine that would be the same for you, even though we're working on different yeah. scoring we're, scales. Yeah, we're talking about 82, 83 for the next highest rated prospects so where, like, yeah, it's five, six points and three and a half for me with a completed grade. 
Yeah, I think, dude, if you're drafting Marvin Harrison Jr., I think you're getting like a Justin Jefferson type impact, right? Like, I think that's that's what you can expect. Um, and I don't think you pass up on a quarterback that you believe in for him, but. The team that that gets Marvin's going to have a heck of a talent to pair with a quarterback. I would call you my first time out. My first time out in the first five minutes. Mike McDaniel would be proud. Um, New England Patriots. Mac Jones on a rookie contract. Look promising once upon a time. Do they bypass? Like the the obvious answer here is Arizona. I guess Chicago right. could have this conversation as well because Mooney's an expiring contract or any yeah. of those three like definitive no's for you for Marvin Harrison. Like you need to draft a quarterback over Marvin Harrison. I wouldn't do that. What I would do though is I wouldn't trade away from Marvin Harrison. Like if I'm the team picking third and two quarterbacks go off the board, just take it. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick him. I'm not trading away from it. No way. What kind of what kind of draft return would it require for you if you were picking two to trade away from Harrison and knowing that you're gonna take yourself out of the strike zone to get him to get a quarterback to get I, I think that be- somebody else to come up for a quarterback. That becomes interesting if I'm like Arizona. But no, dude, you gotta mm-hmm. give Ky- if you're gonna roll with Ky- Kyler, give him Marvin Harrison, man. Are you crazy? I don't know. The only time that that, and then it's the same conversation. If it's like the bears, like, okay, we like fields. Okay, fine. You can convince me of that. But give fields, Marvin Harrison. Right. Or, but then you look at it like this. Can you trade back three, four spots, get a bunch of picks and give, give him Joe alt. You know what I mean? Like See, you that, can play that, that drop offs, that drop offs far enough for me that like, you'd have yeah. to give me the moon in addition. Yeah. To get to trade away from him as a talent, I think that it was the it last time that we had a conversation like this. When in 2021, Miami traded out of three, and it was like Pitts, Chase, and Sewell were the three names so frequently associated with that spot. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of traded that, out right? for a quarterback, and they got the pick courtesy of Houston. I think that's like the most relevant. And they got three ones out of that deal. Obviously, one was a pick swap, three to twelve. Yeah, and then they sent one back to go back up. But like, that's the price I think you're you're talking here if you're trading away from Harrison. Yeah, just don't do it, man. Like you, we talk about <laughs> we talk about Kyles and Joes and not X's and O's. Get yourself Maserati. Like, this Marv is what's is. winning. Yeah, is that what we call him, Maserati Marv? Oh man. I, I you just got to get this player. That's a foundational cornerstone, difference maker, math changer, clean projection. Like, what are your questions? What are your questions with Marvin Harrison? It's so easy and to evaluate. So much... Go ahead. I say it's, it's so easy to evaluate everything that he brings. Like, checks all the boxes: size, athleticism, route running, ball con- ball skills, ball control, rack everything. What What are you concerned about? And the What's his current, path to not succeeding? The current trend of wide receiver markets still makes this such an easy like decision. Like spot track, I don't know if you know this. They they have projected values for the picks for 2024 already. Okay. And the the first overall pick, hypothetically, if you're Chicago and you want to roll with Fields, and he's played pretty well the last month. Mm-hmm. Right. DJ Moore's been really productive. Mooney's an expiring contract, I believe. So there's like some opportunity here. The four years of the base contract is $38 million. If you get Justin Jefferson type impact for less than $10 million per year average <laughs> before the fifth year option, it's it's still a really, really good value. It's not like there's some positions you would look at and be like, it's a little hard to draft Kyle Pitts at three overall for if I'm using this year's numbers. It'd be $35.5 million for a tight end 
You're like, that's a top eight tight end contract right off the bat. Not, not the case of wide receiver. All right, we only got one player into this. We got a lot more to dive into, so stick with us. But, folks, as the weather gets colder, the NFL deals stay hot at FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a ton of different things you can bet on, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Kyle, I've been riding. The James Cook overs of late, they had the over-under for his receiving yards last week against Kansas City at 19 and a half. Shatter that with over 80 yards receiving. So that's the one I've been riding here lately. Find what you're going to ride here. Go over to FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. You tried to quick snap me there on the outro. You tried. You know, you you know what's coming. You you've heard that. You've heard me say that a thousand times. You know. I know, but this, your tra- sometimes your transitions are faster than others. It's a quick transition. Know. Right. So visit FanDuel.com. So it's locked on. Yep. All right. All right the rest let's, of this thing. Let's cast a wider net. Let's cast a wider <laughs> net. Yeah. Give me your top, the rest of your top five. Yeah. Two, I have Caleb Williams, quarterback USC. At three, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I love Joel. Joel, uh, Notre Dame offensive tackle. Number four, Olu Fashanu, the Penn State offensive tackle. And at number five, Leye to Latu, UCLA edge rusher. Okay. I have Caleb Williams at two, so we're lockstep there. I have Olu Fashanu at four as well, so we're in lockstep with two, one, two, and four. I have Joe Alt at five. So if you took me back to July... I was a little more apprehensive about all. I think he had a really nice season this year. Number three is a player who I know uh, I'm a little devastated that we got alt and this player in the same segment of the show. Cause it's probably going to require a lot of conversation for both Brock Bowers. He's yeah. My three. So I go Harrison jr. Caleb Williams, Brock Bowers, Olu Fashanu, Joe alt is my top five. So I think the storyline's contrasting me and you here is that you, we have the top tackle different. We should have a conversation there. And mm-hmm. I have Brock Bowers at seven. Like, let's not do the Joe hates Brock Bowers why thing. Do you, I, why do you hate right, Brock Bowers? There Everyone it is. Thank tweeted you. Joe today and asked there. him why he hates Brock Bowers. Love Brock Bowers. Uh, yeah. Just have him at number seven. So maybe we can we can focus in on those two dynamics here for this part of our conversation. You want to, you want to start there? With Bowers or the tackles? With Bowers. Yeah, I mean, I love Brock I just, Bowers. Because I just got done saying it's hard to draft Kyle Pitts at three overall, yeah. looking at his contract, Yeah, to say it's a top eight tight end contract, and then turn around and put a tight end at three. So I'm aware of that. Really exciting player. Like, physically competitive. Like, elite competitor. Everything he does is 100 miles an hour. I love that about him. Uh, blocks his ass off. Physical route runner, really good with the ball in his hands, ball skills, body control. It's all very, very good. I think he's got a little work to do as a route runner. I think he likes to win with physicality there. And what's his measurables going to be, right? Is he going to be like kind of that around 6'4", 240-ish, which is okay. Like that's Laporte and Kincaid. Like that's kind of how big they are. But I just – I it higher than – Higher than seven is where I like. I just there's like tackles, edge rushers. There's another quarterback that I wanted to rank first before I got to Brock Bowers. So I got really hung up before I did the eval on the listed measures. He's like listed at like six four, two thirty, two thirty five, right? Mm-hmm. Ideally, in your if you're in that stratosphere, you're a Kyle Pitts type athlete and Kyle Pitts was still long Mm -hmm. or you're a bigger player, right? You go back to like what Hawkinson was coming out of Iowa. It's a little bit more of a prototypical build with the contrast of like Noah Fant and people really liked Noah Fant coming out that same class with Hawkinson as the two Iowa tight ends. One goes in the top 20, but the other goes in the top eight because he's a more prototypical player. But then you watched him play or then I watched him play. And it's like, okay, the the competitive toughness that just oozes off the tape for Brock Bowers 
when you foil that with the versatility in all the ways in which he's used and all the ways he wins, uh, gave me a lot more peace of mind to just buy in on this is a player. And I, I don't think, I think this should be uh, an acknowledgement I made. I don't think everybody would use him properly. So I think that's the thing for me is if you're putting him through the lens of certain offenses and certain schemes with certain expectations of what they're asking the tight end to do, whether they're protectors or whether they're flex players or whether they run vertical routes up the seam versus moving a player around and having them be kind of this amorphous, uh, ambiguous part of a 21, 12 personnel, 11 personnel hybrid. Like, I think that's where his value is, is a team that can use him like that. You have to have a certain kind of coaching staff to pull that off. But I think if he gets that, then I think this is the ultimate, this, this is the, this year's version of Kyle Hamilton as far as just a multi-tool weapon that will become so valuable because he should never leave the field and he can do so many things. So you basically just said he's got to go to a Shanahan offense, right? To really maximize feel, what he can it be. It would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> right, as opposed to like if he went to the Raiders. It's going right. to be an inline tight end. He's going to run bench routes and really not use the full breadth of what he can do. Yeah, dude, I get it. Correct. 100%. Yeah. You think he's going to be 240, 245? I think he I think he will get there for the pre-draft process. I don't know that he'll play there, but I also don't know that yeah. he needs to play there. I th I think he does have enough uh functional strength with urgency, with foot fire that he can stay attached on bodies. He's just not going to Darnell Washington you off the ball. Yeah. I think there's three tight ends that people are excited about, young tight ends in the NFL right now. Trey McBride, Sam Laporta, Dalton Kincaid. They're all just a tick under 6'4", sure. and they're all 245. That's what they measured yep. in at. Where's, that's going to be a fascinating thing for Bowers, because if he's 6'3", 230, you know what I mean? That's like he's almost two inches lighter and 15 pounds less. So that's that, going to that be fascinating. That puts you into Harrison Bryant territory as far as like stature. Uh, yeah. Great way to put it. Okay, uh, you're going to pound the table for Olu Fashano as offensive tackle one, and I'm going to pound the table for Joe Alt? I'm not pounding the table for anything. I, I think you have a very valid argument to have Joe Alt as the first tight end, or first <laughs> offensive tackle. And I, I would say the same thing about Fashano. The ceiling with Fashano is what you talk about, the Penn State tackle, right? Like, mm -hmm. unbelievable athlete, un unbelievable stature, pass protections, really really good i i wanted to see more growth in the run game i thought i saw the same run blocker two years in a row um and then just a little bit of over eager moments in pass pro where he kind of even gets on his toes he's very very out in front of himself like um can need to see a little bit more patience there and for all that just for me it just comes back to consistency right like just like as technical as they come um no i don't know that you have the athletic ceiling of fashano but i think you have consistency sustainability run blocking is a little bit better so I'm going with the consistent player over the ceiling. And I, I I did think, as I said, I think Joe Alt made the leap this year that put him into the same conversation as Fashanu based on where they started in the summertime. And if you're looking at player trajectory, I think that's the selling point. So yeah, it's, Fashanu still has so much to tap into as far as what he's capable of being. Alt actually started tapping into it. And I don't know if you know this about Joe Alt. Uh, are you aware of his family ties to the league? Yeah, his dad was first round pick, like twelve year starter for the Chiefs, Chiefs Hall of Famer, and he's got. A, I think he's got another family member that's doing some things. If I'm not mistaken. His dad uh, played in the. Yeah, his brother's in the NHL. So athletic family. Yeah. He's got all the length in the world. Six eight. This is not like a. I don't know who's a good comparison. I guess you could use another Notre Dame player, uh, a Liam Eikenberg situation, right? Where Eikenberg was kind of like weirdly small for a tackle and didn't have length. And then he's ultimately yeah. had to play and kick inside and he's playing at center. And it seems like he's found a home at center after three years. But th that, that ain't the body type. Because Eikenberg, the same conversation 
conversation was had about him coming out of Notre Dame. Oh, he's really technically proficient, and he didn't give up a sack over his last two seasons at Notre Dame playing left tackle. He's a good run blocker. It's a different kind of breed of player that that is Joe Walton. That's what puts him into this stratosphere uh, as far as what he's projected for both of us. He was also a high school tight end. It's always good for the trajectory of these these tackles, right? It's, yep. you know, sometimes it's like quarterback to tight end, and then it's tight end to tackle, right? That's sometimes the natural progression there. All right, we're going to get to the back half of our top tens here in just a moment, so stick with us. But, folks, you got to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most exciting and most fun and most easy way to play daily fantasy sports. The format is incredible. It's just you against the numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. It's just you against the numbers. Here's what you do. You select two or more players. You pick more or less on their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long, and picks can be made in under a minute. And then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. And also love this about prize picks. You can cross-pollinate between sports. So you got Thursday night football coming up tomorrow. So you can you can take that. You can make your entry. That also includes maybe something you like in the NBA, something you like in the NHL, and really put together entries that you like the projections. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. You're back five. Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina at six. Brock Bowers at seven. Number eight, Malik Neighbors, LSU wide receiver. Number nine, Talese Fuaga, Oregon State offensive tackle. Number 10, Johnny Newton, the defensive lineman from Illinois. Okay. You could tell we didn't check notes here as we get deeper. Uh, I have Johnny Newton at six. So we both have Johnny Newton in the top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there is a clear drop, however, from alt to like the next tier down. So I think I do think there's an acknowledgement of like I like the top five a ton. I think Newton is the top of the next tier of premier talent. I then have uh, J.C. Latham, uh, University of Alabama, at seven. I have Malik Neighbors at eight. I have Talise Fuaga at nine, and I have Graham Barton, offensive lineman, Duke mm. at ten. Kyle's about them old linemen. How many you got in the top ten? Like half of them. Class of offensive linemen. Yeah, it's uh, Fashanu, Alt, Latham, Fuaga, and Graham Barton. Yeah, it's five. I mean, I have three, which is a healthy amount too in the top ten. I also have Jordan Morgan in the top twenty. Um, there's that BYU tackle people like. No, Kyle's shaking his head. Kyle's out. Oh no! First Cougar Kyle hasn't liked in his life. Pause. No comment. <laughs> Kingsley. Uh, uh, Kingsley is a, a day two guy for me. So, but he went to Oregon, was a big time recruit. So, it's a good, it gets everybody's eyes. Let's All right, so you got- uh, talk about Newton. I guess it's like our, our Newton and neighbors are our, and Fuaga are our consensus yeah. that also made the top yeah. 10. So do you want to talk about any of them explicitly? You didn't, you, so you wait, you didn't, you didn't have lot to in yours. Is that medical for the UCLA yes. edge? Yes. Oh, cause the player is unbelievable. Like that was it the, is, the most fun standards. I had. The most fun I had watching any player was lot to out of UCLA. You, I but think yeah, the, if you're going to draft him early, just based off the medical situation there, and we've kind of heard some stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's concerning. Off the record about what, what his status was. And, of course, when he goes, goes through the process, he'll have that updated for all the teams, and we're hoping for all the best. you got to have house money, I think. I think you either got to have multiple first-round picks or you got to be a team that's really, really loaded and is just adding or drafting ahead of needs. I I would be petrified based off of what the medical history uh, for Leia Tulatu is. But yes, his tape this year is outstanding. And, and he was a good pass rusher beforehand, but 
He flipped the switch. Brother. Just has every move in the bag. Plays his butt off every single snap. Like, literally just ran circles around Pac-12 offensive tackles all year long. Mm-hmm. But and there were some I good understand ones. it. It's a, yeah, the, I watched him against Fuaga. Yeah, I mean, that was – I thought Fuaga played actually pretty well. I thought that was the best – a tackle looked against him in the exposures I had, but okay. So it's the player's awesome. The tapes, very, the medicals are very, very concerning. Johnny Newton. We both agree. I had him at 10. You had him at, is it six, six? Yeah. Let's get into it. And he, his, his presence and his thumbprint on that defense expand so much further than the box score. So I know he didn't have like monster sack numbers, but he's such just such a bowling ball disruptive player. And he's he's one of those players where I think his build, even though it's not like he's not a massive or looming or imposing build in the middle, because he's built so low, it's almost Ed Oliver-ish that he really wins leverage naturally just because of how he's able to play into the pads of offensive linemen. I, I'd agree. There's a dense athletic build that plays with leverage. He's explosive and fluid, and he's technical, right? Like, that's a lot of good stuff on top of being an extremely high-motor player. And in this NFL where there's a lot of, horizontal stress on a defense to be able to work laterally, get down the line of scrimmage. I mean, this guy's going to be an answer in that capacity and the pass rush. Everybody wants interior pass rush. Hello, here's Johnny Newton. We haven't had this type of player with consistency throughout the last few years, and I think that's going to make him really, really valuable. Um, I think he can play anywhere from – I think he can play like a 4-I as well. Like you think about what mm-hmm. Dallas does with Odigi Zua, who's been an absolute stud for them. Like that, in addition to just being a penetration style three. Um, yeah, I think he's going to provide a big time answer for somebody. Be one of those foundational players as well that makes a lot of plays. And he, in obvious passing situations, you could put him on the nose too. You could put him over the center. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So I think you can really move him around. I agree with you as far as like, the run trends of the league with how much zone you have now and a guy who can can kind of flow with the point of its attack or or uh beat a cutoff block off the backside and chase the back down from behind. Oh yeah. Like all of that I think is going to be really relevant for Johnny Newton. Um and as an interior player that's another market that is just exploding. So if you get plus value uh, I would ask you this because we heard from Bucks fans. Uh what was it last week? Yeah, we did our contrast update. him to Kalasha Kansi, who was another like undersized him. interior defensive line player who went in the first round, top twenty. Oh, I think he's got an advantage in body type. Yeah, I think he's. I like the way he's built more, um, and I think he. I think he holds up better against drive blocks. I don't know that he has quite the athleticism of a Kansi. But it ain't far off, and he's bigger. Mm-hmm. And they're really satisfied with that impact. It took a little bit of time for the Bills, but they, they're very satisfied with that Oliver. I think he's kind of in that mold. And I mean, Ed's bigger than Cansey, but I think you're going to get that type of presence. And this defensive tackle market is booming, right? Like, we we spent a lot of time this offseason – and, and they're all getting it, right? They're all, Simmons and Oliver got paid, and Williams and Christian Wilkins are going to get the bag. Lawrence got the bag. Wait, wait till Wilkins gets his because he's probably going to be 25. He's he's leading that team in sacks. He's got seven and a half right now. More coming, more coming. Yeah, more so coming. he's going to get he's going to get more than we probably talked about in the off season. Uh, so yeah, I think that only helps the value of a, of a guy like this. Uh, Fuaga. Stud. What were your concerns when you heard when I told you about him? Because you were like, hey, is there anybody I need to make sure I watch? And I was like, please <laughs> watch Talise Fuaga. And I was so happy he made your 10. Yeah. Well, I, I, I typically get hunt, honeypotted by these types of players, like physical, nasty, tenacious players. I, I loved 
Evan Jenkins. I love Tyler Smith. And I, I, I mean, I was excited to watch Talese Velaga because I think he'd get a lot of that run blocking ability. I was a little surprised by how explosive he was off the ball, almost to a fault mm-hmm. at times. Um, and like overrunning and, and, blocks because he's just yeah, so dude, like you, you got to shoot. <laughs> right, dude. It's insane. It's insane. I, I, it's, you don't see that very often. So yeah, that, that explosiveness and then like the body control component for, you know, like maulers typically you're like, why are they a mauler? Are they just pushing people around? Is there technique behind it? Is it translatable in terms of how they sustain their blocks and latch? Waga has it right. Like, I think he's very much a complete player. Um, maybe some footwork stuff in pass pro in terms of set points and being less explosive to the second level. But I think you have one of those like impact starting right tackles in the NFL. So I thought that it was interesting. The two names you invoked, and I agree with this, the style of the college tape that you're referring to was Tyler Smith and Tevin Jenkins. And both of those guys in the NFL yeah. are guards. At least for now, we'll see with Tyler Smith long term. Some people think Fawaga's a guard. I, I am not. I'm not as antsy to do that. So what? And that was going to be my question: Is what was it for you? I know what it was for me. What was it for you that gave you the peace of mind to continue to project him outside at tackle? Length, control, and how he looked against Leitu. I thought he really he's got to work on a set and points. It, and it was at the length where he's really able to extend and ride you through. You no, know, and it the tape's a little different at Oregon State versus the Oklahoma State tape. All of their passes <laughs> yeah. were RPOs, right? Like they, they, I'm still yeah. block and run for every pass that we're throwing. Your true pass sets are a little different. And, and I think you get a little bit better balance with Oregon State where you've seen a little bit more of it, and it gives me the peace of mind to say, hey, I think he can play tackle. Kyle, we got through this conversation. We didn't even talk about Caleb Williams or Drake May. Lake Neighbors is a guy we could have discussed. So the, we're just scratching the happens. surface here on the draft talk, man. That's what happens when we wait to start draft until December 13th, you know? Uh, the guilty lots more coming. You, oh, it has to be. Lots more it has coming. to be lots more. Yeah, oh, okay. for sure. Well, everybody can plan accordingly. Come on back and see us. I'm Kyle Krabs. He's Joe We're locked on NFL scouting. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Make it a great rest of your day. We're out of here. Peace.